Yo, this is Doug. You're listening to Radio Juxtapose. First of all, can I start off by apologizing to you guys? I'm really sorry that our flow and the kind of drops on these episodes got somewhat kind of knocked off kilter. We're trying to hit them out on a fortnightly basis. Uh, we missed a couple of those slots. I think we're back in a rhythm now and we're going to try and get back on track so that every second Monday we're going to be dropping you guys a fresh episode. So in this episode coming up today, we are in conversation with the New York-based larger-than-life character Mad Saki. The interview itself was recorded with Evan at the Beyond the Streets exhibition in New York. And if you want to just get straight into that interview, then skip forward to about minute 20 right now. If you are killing time, you're sitting on a plane, on a train or something like that, and you're like, yeah, you know what, let's just roll and see where this goes. Obviously, given that it's been a month, myself and Evan have a lot of catching up to do. So we spend about 20 minutes unpacking some of the projects that we've been involved in. Evan's just come back from China at the Lucy Sparrow exhibition. I've just come back from Greece, where I was over recording with the boys Icy and Salt. And of course, Evan was at the Beyond the Streets exhibition in New York. So all that covered in this right here, right now, you are listening to Radio Juxtapose. If you enjoy this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are back. So we have microphones, recording devices. We're just like a little bit older, a little bit grayer than when we last did this. In between the last time we've recorded, it's been beyond the streets. You went to Greece. There's a China trip mixed in there. There's, I'm sure you went back to Norway. I'm sure you did. Of course I've been to Norway. Of course I've been to Norway since then. I loved every second of it. But there's, yeah, a lot, a lot has happened in our world in our life. So where, where should we start? Where should we start? Should we start at the beginning? Tell me, you just got back from China, Lucy Sparrow. I yeah, oh, that's actually good because this is uh, the first the first guest of the Radio Juxtapose podcast. Um, she opened up a all felt muse- museum show retrospective of the world of art history um, that was like, I mean, I walked in and I was like, what the fuck did you just do? She took it to a whole new place. When I first met her, she was like, I think I want to do a museum at some point. And I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. And she goes, no, no, I make like the entire museum out of felt. And she did it, and it was quite impressive. I mean, that David. Well, you know how you, you, f- you forget how big the David really is. Well, in bits. I mean, if you go to Florence and you like kind of see it in that atrium or whatever, you know, it's it's a – in bits. <laughs> Gee, Jesus. <laughs> it took you a minute to land that one. <laughs> Oh, we're back. Um, no, it was it was amazing, and I what I thought was really fascinating about it is that um, art art history really goes down to like seventy five pieces. Like when you really break it down in the way that the West has constructed the the art historical uh, lexicon, like it is about seventy pieces of art. How many? Are, if you if you say that it, art history breaks down to seventy seventy five. No, she literally pieces. had all seventy five of them in there. She had all seventy five. Yeah. Of them. And then, like, you know, she threw in some of, like, the more poppy things, like the, the Naras and um, a couple of Damien Hirst nods. But I guess, you know, Damien Hirst shark is part of it. So uh, it, it was just really fascinating. Like, oh, everybody recognizes these pieces of art as, quote, important. And uh, this is where we're at in 2019. What was I – didn't, I didn't catch this then. What was the decision or what was the motivation to do something so kind of – through a Western lens to do it in Beijing. Well, I think there's part of it is that what, was that part of like the the kind yeah, of the I, I think game was, plan, the narrative with her, or was it just like the opportunity came and she decided to do that there? No, I think part of the narrative was that um, the the world of art is has predominantly been in the West in terms of what gets in the history books. So therefore, I'm going to bring it to you. I think there's a little bit of that. A little bit of that cheeky sort of like, yeah, I know, I'm bringing Western art to China kind of thing, but I'm going to make it out of felt. Like, I think there was a little, in her own little way, kind of a cheeky nod to, to like, what's what how it's been over the last couple hundred years, couple thousand years. But I also think there is this familiarity with those pieces of art that um, made it accessible for her to do it out of felt. And I think the Chinese audience, as, I've, as I noticed and uh, saw – didn't really have any hesitation of knowing what all those pieces were either, which was interesting. What was the what was the the kind of the response, the reaction 
from what you understood. And you know, the thing is, I was kind of there for the the kind of last few days of install, and there for like the first day of the opening, which is kind of like one of those private event kind of things. So, you know, you don't really get to see like what every, you know, kind of what the the general public. You got to see industry. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Lucy and I did a talk the next day, and the audience was pretty responsive and asked a lot of great questions. They get the art hist- history part of it, but I think they really wanted to know more about. Is the felt a comment on consumerism? Is the felt a comment on mass production? Like, they, I think that was kind of the thing that a lot of people were asking, and I thought that was pretty smart and savvy. And then the kind of the mass production element also being in China, you get, it's like... I mean, there's so many... That's the thing, is like, you could walk to that show and be like, oh, Lucy made this out of felt. Like, but then you like you really start breaking down every little part of it, and you're like, ah, oh, man, this is pretty smart, you know? And... And even Lucy was saying, too, it's like the the felt they had was really good. I mean, it's just like these little things about it. It's just like, I don't know. Like, it, it just seemed like it hit on so many different levels. And um, I think the audience there will get it. But I think as it tours more and more, I think it's, I think it's supposed to tour in China. I think it's going to get more and more attention. That was going to be my next question. What's happening with that show? I believe it's touring to different cities around China. The, the M Woods Museum, um, I think they're pretty uh, well, I think the people who run the museum are pretty well established and I think they're going to tour it around. We're going to get it over here? In the West? I, I don't think we're going to get it in the West. Wow. That's, that's, that's bold and ballsy and kind of cool, but also kind of like, I would have liked to see that. Right. I can say this now that I'm out of China, but you know what's really funky about China uh, as a Westerner is that um, you start to realize really quickly that little things that you – like the internet just didn't work in my hotel for no reason besides the fact that like maybe I had, I had a Western VPN and then it was just not going to work. You know, like there are little things like nobody really knows about Hong Kong. So that's like a little weird little thing like – uh, there was just like these little things that were kind of off the whole trip that I actually really appreciated because it, Beijing itself looks pretty modern now, but I like the little kind of, <laughs> the sort of like kind of off parts of it because it made me feel like I was in a different place, which I liked. So yeah, that was great. But then, okay, so that when I was there, you were getting back from Greece. Yeah. Let's go, let's now let's go to our other guests from the podcast, Icy and Saw, and you were there with them. Yeah, for, for, for keen listeners, um, I think <laughs> this is almost just we i think we kind of name dropped the project a little bit yeah you uh, did at the end yeah. of the podcast and so i see and saw the iranian brothers had I, I, kind of like an ongoing project they had raised some money they had done a print release to raise some money um had teamed up with a a charity an ngo based in lesbos in greece and they were their kind of project was to go over and build a vegetable series of vegetable gardens and give out flowers to to refugees and maybe i missed this in, in the in the video but was the refugee camp made up of iranian refugees or was it syrian or was it a mix it's one of these things the reason that it's and this is something that we could end up like starting to unpack and it could be like another you know another 40 minutes and we've kind of gotten nowhere uh this particular is very popular because it's of its geographical convenience to uh turkey which is kind of like this this passage so Everyone from the Middle East, from North Africa, this is the, the general kind of like expanse of, of, of where people are coming from. So you've got people from Yemen, from Syria, from Afghanistan, from Iran, from, you know, from all over um, that are kind of coming and utilizing this passage as a gateway into Europe. Like I say, you can talk and unpack and discuss and dissect all these different reasons and facets. So for now, when we were there, it was predominantly from Afghanistan, but uh, sort of partly Iran as well and it kind of actually tied in as well because of Trump sanctions on Iran uh, there was no more construction work going which meant loads of the Afghans in Iran had then kind of like no other options so now they're coming over so it kind of goes on and on and on and you, you spend days talking about this stuff and kind of get nowhere it's fascinating that you said that because it's like I didn't realize like how quickly those type of sanctions really actually begin to affect like it's it's like it, it affects like right then and there. It's not like this kind of like trickling of you know people leave immediately. Yeah, there was no there's no yeah. no more jobs, no more work. They did, I don't think they realized how easy it was going to be them for them to communicate with everyone because they're just speaking Farsi to each other. You know the the the, the boys I see and saw it. They speak Farsi, they speak Turkish, they speak English. So 
you know, they were able to communicate with absolutely everyone, which was kind of incredibly useful. And nobody kind of realized that it was going to it was going to be like that. So it just it made the whole process a lot easier, you know, to communicate what the idea was, what we were trying to achieve and why, you know, and to get people to kind of like openly talk with us and to be on camera and things like that. You seem to capture and um, we'll make sure to embed the video again when we post this, but. Um, you seem to really get some intimate moments, and I was wondering. That's kind of why I brought up the where the refugees Iranian, because it seemed like you got really intimate with people, which with the language barrier would have been, it would have taken a long time. We were told when we when we went there, they were like, "Look, you know, just be really careful with the camera. Um, people, you know, they aren't going to want the camera pointed at them." And I was like, "Yeah, look, I I understand this. I completely get it." Yeah, and like two seconds into this place i've got like 10 people tugging at me like can we could you take a photo of us can you take a photo of us and suddenly it's like hang on what did you say yeah right <laughs> because I, this this feels very different and and i think with the language thing as well people you know what even even when i would just go off on my own and do filming you know people would just like pull you in and and, and just want to spend time with you just you know trying to engage in some kind of conversation and that kind of warmth it was just really throughout and of course there's parts where you distance yourself and you you know you're sensitive to a situation i never wanted with that to be filming but it was never my intention to go out and make like you know here's people at their lowest and the lowest point they'll ever experience some of the lowest and the worst conditions that you could ever possibly imagine here's my chance to use you know, my three minutes of friendship that I've struck up with this person to expose that yeah, yeah, yeah. to 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 make some kind of melodramatic story. So it was like, look, I want to try and showcase something a bit more positive. So which is why it's, you know, lots of children smiling and people, the people look a little bit more empowered and kind of like, you know, with their own autonomy. You know, it's not like these people are helpless without our, you know, without the, the help of the white man coming in and and saving them you know it was like these are these are real people like half of these people all had businesses and right I, I i thought like the beginning when you when the when you had the gentleman who who used to garden when he was at home like it was just this little tidbit of like that just like normal every day everybody across the world can understand like their grandfather who gardens in the backyard kind of thing and it was kind of like it, it, like you said it's not this isn't about like the suffering it was more about just like no it's just a simple act of that which is what somebody does for a couple hours every day and he, now he gets to do it there. I just thought it was a good touch because you're right. It, you, you could do the sort of BBC guy in the collared shirt, like, like, Oh, the suffering of, you know, like, which is, you know, you watch the news and you see, but like, I thought you, you did a good job of like making these people probably, um, or just connecting on more of like the actual day to day. I thought it was really yeah. nice the way you guys did that. What I, what I, don't think anyone was prepared for us because they had raised this money and they had built this garden and then they were kind of like and i hope they don't mind me saying this if you're listening uh yeah sorry guys if, <laughs> if, if you're not happy with this um they were like they still had some money left over they're like hang on this like building these building materials would have cost us like six times the amount in new york and we've just kind of like cleared out a garden center so we still got this money so they, we just filled like three vans with flowers and just distributed the flowers. They were like, look, do you know what? We'll just, we'll bring the flowers down. And if anyone wants to come and take some flowers, they can come and pick them up. And and within, you know, sort of two minutes, that news had traveled around this camp like wildfire. And suddenly you've got everyone running down, little kids who you thought would never be interested in flowers. They're walking away with stacks. And suddenly all the tents have got flowers outside them and the women are like growing mint. And they're like, Oh, this is amazing! I j mint is just what I needed for for my foods. You know, it's the one thing that I can't get here and stuff like that. So, it was just this really kind of like yeah, it was kind of a, a pretty powerful moment. Do you you know like the, it's it's the simplest thing, but like if if you ever put flowers and just in your apartment or in front of your like it it just makes you feel just a little happier. I don't know. It's just the way it's the yeah, way human humans just have this weird reaction to like natural things it's just a weird yeah, it's like, like living near water it makes you feel calm yeah there's just a kind of a nice thing no i i actually thought that touch was was really nice too um it was it was all just kind of like ad hoc it was just kind of like you know okay cool this is here and that's how those guys work you know it's amazing watching them work like that because they just respond to these situations and it's like i don't think they 
they necessarily go over with these ideas ready they just kind of go over they read the situation and then they just start sparring ideas off of each other and you know they, they, they did a couple of little interventions there that were you know just so you know incredibly visually powerful that it, it's a it, we've t said it again and again and it was so cool to be able to do the podcast they're, they're on a they're really working on a really nice trajectory yeah. trajectory at the moment they changed their whole trajectory of their career by improvising when they went to a festival when they didn't quite know what they wanted to do so like it's just they have and maybe because it's brothers and they have like this kind of unspoken language between them but they they seem to have the ability to adapt and evolve to, to, to the situation and really like kind of heighten the heighten the uh the intellect of the project well well and it's it's impressive it's so impressive i love it's it it's just it's just you know w like that that would be for many other artists that would be their idea of utter hell you know this like hang on i don't have my plan i need my plan i need my research i need everything in there right but, you know for these guys it's just part of their their process i guess well, you're talking about this idea of kind of camaraderie and this idea of collaboration I have never been in a room with this much history of one genre and seen so many smiles and happiness and camaraderie in my entire history of working at Juxtapose. It was, it, I, and I, I, I'm saying that completely seriously. Like, you know, you, you get a bunch of gra graffiti and street art people from the early seventies to now. Like there's, there's bravado, there's ego, there's like people who want certain kind of like recognition. I, all I saw was people talking about past times, current times, everything, and just with smiles and, and sharing materials. It was like, it was insane. Like I've never, I just kind of thought like I'd see a bunch of guy, people who were kind of like shit talking to each other in a quiet way, but no, it was like, it was the, it, you just don't see that many people, that much history in one place and everyone's kind of in the same wavelength. And I thought whatever beyond the streets, becomes as it travels if it does travel like i just think like that that week building up to the new york show in particular like roger gassman and his team should feel really proud he created that environment just for the artists do, do you mean more so than the la yeah i do and i don't know if it's because new york has this sort of like kind of condensed vibe and history to itself with the scene but i also think there was something about the fact like all of us like we'd wake up in the morning go down to the bottom of the hotel and there's like Shepard Ferry's getting coffee and Alicia McCarthy's there and all these like all these people who are part of the scene are all kind of we're all hanging out and you just kind of have like your own little pockets of it felt like a street art festival. I was going to say it sounds it sounds very new art that kind of like egalitarian uh, model, you know. But it's like fucking it's like Kenny Scharf, you know? It's like Shepard Ferry. It's like the it's kind of like the people who's, who are foundational pieces kind of all hanging out, all kind of talking about what their installations are, how they're coming along, and but everyone's really positive about it. And um, you have guys like Todd James and Steve Powers coming by every day because they live near there and they're kind of checking in. Barry McGee's there, like uh, Dabs Myla are working. I mean, it was just Maya Hayek's hanging out. It, it was just kind of like after a while, I was like, fanboy, oh. Fanboy overload. Oh, it was fanboy overload. And the guest that we have this, this week, Matsaki, who – Born in Japan, grew up in New Jersey, taking the train through New York City to go to school and seeing all this graffiti. Like he's kind of having his like star moment, both as an artist and as a fanboy too. So I thought he'd be the great guest for this week because it's kind of like he was he was kind of in and out of being like I have work in the show. I'm gonna have my a major solo show in Hong Kong in a couple of weeks, but I'm also like all my favorite artists are here too. I just think it was perfect to have him on the, on the show. He's one of these guys that, and, and every so often you kind of get this from people and I haven't met him, but it's just from, from listening. I've listened to the interview. His artwork is such a direct reflection of his personality. A hundred percent. I got to give a lot of credit to, uh, this, uh, filmmaker and contributor to Juxpo's Joey Garfield, who introduced Matsaki and I, I think Matsaki is in that weird place where he doesn't actually have a home, <laughs> even though he's Japanese and American. Like he just never has f had this kind of like I'm from here thing. And I think it just, per but it's like, he's got this kind of infectious sort of story. You know, he went to New Jersey to do some research when he was in, at beyond the streets to go back home. Uh, he got like stopped by the cops too, but um, which is really funny. But uh, he's making paintings now about his childhood in New Jersey. 
and he already posted a couple on his Instagram, and I'm just they're so funny. They look like they look like things out of a Stranger Things because it's just the way he, the way he paints himself, and it, it's just it's so good. Yeah, and I, uh, his his relationship with Takashi Murakami is so important to the story. So it, I think it just kind of covers so much ground to like where street art and graffiti's sort of language kind of is extended to. I think it's cool. I mean, I thought Beyond the Streets was great. I thought the New York was um, just a, got a chance to be a little bit more comprehensive than L.A. just because the space was so much bigger. I'm just going to hold this. I think it's probably the best. <laughs> So, yeah, I know, like, this is so professional. <laughs> We're coming to you live this. from the 16th floor of the William Vale Hotel in the room of <laughs> Matsaki. It's, it's low <laughs> fi. Um, so we're here for Beyond the Streets. So yeah. let's just start there. Okay. The opening night, uh. you in particular, uh. you had a blast. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> I could just keep on saying yes, 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 yes for like 30 minutes. But like, so you don't, those kind of openings, uh -huh. when you see like all the heroes, yeah. it's like, it means something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, um, I wrote on my story on my Instagram, you know, with that, you know, it says 1980, the photo. Yeah, yeah. Of the subway you know, train, and that's the first thing I saw come, you know, arriving from JFK to going to New Jersey, you know? Yeah. All those trains, I was like, what the fuck, you know? And so, you know, you, I grew up there, I started learning, you know, about the graffitis, and, you know, you, you know when you see the names, and, you know, and 45, 40 something years later, you know, you get to meet them, you know? Right, <laughs> right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was like, oh my God, you know, I'm like, why am I in the fucking show? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you you had those moments? Like, why am I... In the... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, you know, I'm not a graph writer or anything, you know. Were you ever a graph writer? No, I, I did, you know. You dabbled. Yeah, yeah, but right. not serious, you know. Not serious, serious shit, you know. Right. Yeah, it was just like, very, very, you know. <laughs> Once every four years. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the blue. Right. You know? So, yeah, okay, that's, that's a good start. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you were born in Osaka, mm -hmm. and then... The family moved to Jersey. Yeah, Jersey, man. So, like, just culture shock. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I The thing is, I was so fucking stupid, right? So, you know, I didn't even know the concept of airplane, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when I moved to Jersey, right? And, I, and my parents brought the radio back from, from Japan. Okay. And uh, the, the radio station I always listen to doesn't come on, and it, it, it's in weird language. I was like, why? You know, so, uh, so I, hop, I'm a hop, I hop on my bicycle... And How I, old were you, by the way? Six. Okay. And I ride, right? And I wanted to go to the neighborhood, the same neighborhood I used to go to. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't find and it. And then where was this in Jersey? Uh, Ridgefield Park, the first, yeah, the Ridgefield Park. Okay. Yeah, I, I was there for like a year. So you were trying to ride your bike from Ridgefield Park <laughs> to Osaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't know that, the, you know, that... I was here. Right. Yeah, I thought right. that Japan was right around the corner. Your parents didn't explain that to you? And they... <laughs> I think she, they tried their best. <laughs> but but I, I couldn't just understand. Are you an only child? No, no, I got a younger sister. <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance that she understood and she was Yeah, younger. I know, man. Oh, my God. Okay, so, yeah. so then, mm. in a way, mm. this is home. Yeah, man, this is my home. Yeah. yeah. And you still feel a little bit, like, when you come back here? When I come back here, I have no, like... Like, you know, I, I feel like I was here yesterday. You know, right. I don't have any, like, you know, oh, the New York changed, but nothing changed. You right, know? right. Yeah, I'm, I'm here, you know, and that's it, you know. But, like, let's... <laughs> no, I, I want to get into, like, what got you into art, because you have a very unique... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Output. Uh-huh. And, like, the way that... And we've I've written about it, we've talked about yeah. it, but, like, how did it... How does art... Where does art begin for you? Um, okay. And then we'll get into your diet. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I told you we were going to talk about art, and I already oh fucked up. Oh, my God. Well, I'm already so confused that you rode a bike to, to I, try to go to Japan. <laughs> all right. So. Okay, so when I moved here, right, I couldn't speak any English. Right. So. Which is probably not. Yeah, and I was the only, only Asian kid, or, or just, I'm, I'm not, 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 not non-white, yeah. you know, and I was the only, you know, foreign kid in yeah. the school. And there was no ESL, you know, the or anything. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like sitting in the class, like, what the fuck, you know? And I'm I was a quiet kid in Japan, you know. I didn't, I didn't have any friends, or I, I hated school, okay. and I always had a detention because I had fucking bad scores on tests and everything. 
and I don't, I don't have any good memories of Japan. But anyway, you know, coming here with no, no skill, you know, so I had to draw. Yeah. You know, and I had to draw to communicate with the, with the classmates, you know. Okay. So that's, that's what happened, you know, and I didn't, I wasn't into drawing anything, you know. Was, right. You know, so, but I had to It was draw. like a survival. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, survival. Right. Yeah. Right. Thing. And, you know, so kids, I know, I kind of know what they asked, you know, as a kid, you know, kind of. You can kind of, yeah, 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 figure it out. Right. So I draw by answer like apple or airplane <laughs> you know and I, I draw an airplane and it says airplane and it's like oh airplane oh okay. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah that's how I started to to learn so the wonderful public school system in New Jersey <laughs> yeah, man. didn't want to teach you English but oh, the kids yeah taught you. yeah and uh, the thing is um I wasn't a good drawer at all compared to the to the Japanese kids in Japan right okay. you know and uh but they were so surprised that I could draw well so all day all day in school right from morning to the afternoon, I draw and I walk around with my drawing to each class in, in, in every class in school to show them and come home and come back to the my 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 room, uh, and, and I don't know and that gave me a weird confidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, my drawing is good. Yeah, right. And, I, and I'm I'm showing to everyone and they're like, oh. You know? <laughs> But I'm like, but but like uh, they, they were kind of like, oh, Matsaki's yeah. the, the kid who, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that 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 kid, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> were the were the teachers into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, they didn't mean they have to teach you anymore. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to teach me any of that, yeah. you know, because because I'm sitting in the classroom just alone, you know, <laughs> I'm like knowing not anything, you know, and I was just drawing, you know, because I have nothing to do, so I was just drawing. And that that went home with you, like you would draw when you would go home, and nah, when I, yeah, I think so, yeah, 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 but yeah, that's the yeah, 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 I guess so. So you were. <laughs> That was a weird how, kid, man. How, how? Yeah, you are weird. Yeah. No, but whatever. That, that's a, that the fact that it was a survival uh, mechanism. Uh -huh. Everybody in that show across mm. the street mm. would probably say that graffiti or art is their survival mechanism. Uh -huh. So that yeah. connects the whole thing, man. So, like, but yours is just <laughs> unique because it was like, I, I you just needed to yeah communicate. Literally, yeah, 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 to survive. Yeah, you like, yeah. you needed to like eat food. Yeah, yeah, at lunch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where am I going? Yeah. yeah. And I did that for like three years because it took me three years to to understand what they're saying. Right. And it it takes like you know three to four years to speak. You know I know what they're exactly saying, but I can't say it. Right. Back, right. Right. You know. And then for like three years, I was just drawing. And so did how much did this stay with you? Like were you like then when in high school you're like oh I'm gonna go to art classes or oh my god all right high school high school you know I grew up in Jersey and it's now now I'm, now I'm in, a, in a county called Leonia right okay. next to Fort Lee just you know right off the GW bridge oh my god was the high school the four year was hell you know you know <laughs> you know yeah. high school if you're an art student you know your yeah yeah right you know, yeah the high school life is is a, so then it becomes a different kind of survival yeah method. yeah 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 and uh, you know. And and my parents were like like a total traditional Japanese parents, you know. Yeah. My pa my dad was a salary man, you know, works at Panasonic. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Typical, you know. And all right, Misaki, after you graduate high school, you're going back to Japan, go to college, good college, and become a salary man. I'm say, Dad, <laughs> no, hey, Dad, you know, you've raised me, <laughs> you raised me in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, come on. Yeah, I can't do they fight. Even okay, I say do it, but I'll just go to school one day and I'll I'll drop out. Right. And and they were like, oh, he's fucking serious, <laughs> you right. know. So so they were like, what do you want to do? It's like, um, art school, you know, because I there was no, I I had bad grades, mm -hmm. you know, and only thing I could do was draw. Yeah. And my uh, you know and it was like, but you haven't drawn for like years. You don't you, you don't you don't you don't even draw at home, you know. What are you gonna do? It's like, well, I could draw from tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'll just start. <laughs> yeah, I'll do my. Portfolio. I'll prove a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to my art teacher. Said, I need a portfolio. You know, and I just made a portfolio and went to Parsons. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, which is like a good art school. Yeah. So it's like, you weren't fucking around. No, back then, Parsons was shit, man. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah okay. And I got in as a, with a probation, because my, my grades were so fucked up. I said, if you fail one class, you're out. Was, you know what that right. is? That's yeah. the, oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. You, know, you can't tell right now, so I just shrugged up. Yeah, yeah. Like, kind of. Yeah. But, okay, look, wait, let me do, I'm going to go one little mm -hmm, side thing mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. You said your dad was a salary man. Mm-hmm. And in Japan, it's a very, very particular yeah. life. Mm -hmm. 
when you when your dad's here in New Jersey, does he while out a little bit? Does he break any sort of traditional Japanese? No, guy? man. No, he didn't. No, nah, no. Nah. So you guys didn't have like the the, the thing is, I went to Japanese school from uh, from fifth grade to ninth grade okay. every day on school bus, and then Japanese school was in Queens and okay. and, and Flushing or somewhere else. Oh, okay. And, and that's why I'm able to speak Japanese and write Japanese. Okay. You no, know? and that's how they were serious about it. You know. And they said no. Wait, no. This was this was after American school. Or yeah, right, right. Yeah, I went to elementary school, right? The grade school. And then they put you in jail. Yeah, the middle from middle school. Yeah, they're like, got, yeah, they're like fuck this American culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. So I was from American culture to total hundred percent Japanese culture. I was like fuck, right? You know, and I had to start everything over. You know, cause I I never seen this much Japanese in one place. You know, right. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's like a, so you. This is it's like you've constantly gone through weird yeah. culture. Yeah. Yeah. Like where you're you're Japanese but you're not. Yeah. But you are. Yeah. But you're American but, but you're not. not. Yeah. You are. Yeah. And that's then that, that you wrote that about me, right? Yeah. 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 Constant yeah. struggle between the you know that right. identity crisis. Right. Right. Yeah. Do yeah. you think it, do you think of it as an identity crisis or do you just think of it as a just the way it is? Uh, up until high school, it was a total identity crisis. Yeah. Okay. You know, after going to Parsons, you see all this, you know. Cycles. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm normal. <laughs> yeah. Psycho. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm normal. I'm cool. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So up till yeah, the the j total Jersey life, you know, from nine, uh, 1980 to 1991 mm -hmm. was was hell. Right. Okay. Yeah. And did any, let's say you're taking the bus ride to Queens. Mm -hmm. Did you see any graffiti? Did oh any my god. Stuff? Okay. When you come off the GW bridge, right, from Jersey, entering, you enter on um, what's it called um, uh, Bronx across Bronx Expressway. Okay. And back then, man, the whole fucking wall was just just bombed, you know, and this car is burning, yeah. you know, and just graffiti, just total graffiti, and the trains were fucking bombed, you know, and I'm seeing that every day, you know. And did, did it resonate, you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I couldn't read, you know, I couldn't read what it says, but the colors and that form right. was, was, I think, was unconsciously, right. you know, raping my brain, you know. <laughs> I don't know if I could say that, but, you know. We're going to say it. Yeah. But... Well, I guess that's what's good about graffiti is like a lot of times you can't read the tags mm -hmm. anyway. It's just about mm -hmm. the colors and yeah, the, the visual. So it kind of doesn't matter what yeah. language you speak. It's yeah. like it kind of works. Yeah, but it talked to me, you know. It mm -hmm. spoke to me, you know. It's like, wow, this is cool, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know how they do it, but, you know, but it was like, wow, every day. Right. Yeah. So in Parsons' early 90s, mm. who are some of the... Do you, are you friends with any of those people that were in school with you? Like, did any of those people go off to do anything? Like, who was who were who were the people you were hanging out with at that point? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, UFO, UFO, nine oh, okay. seven, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, now we're like this, but you know, <laughs> back then, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there was there were people around that kind of have still to this day yeah, kind of yeah, going yeah. yeah one or two right yeah. yeah yeah and so then you you stayed in mm. new york you didn't go back to japan yeah i stayed i stayed much yeah. to your parents yeah chagrin yeah yeah and i did all these different jobs here and there you art know? jobs or just nah nah just fucking uh, um the movie you know the yeah, driving yeah. yeah you know you know the trucks serving coffee so what did you go to art school for i know <laughs> and that's why I, right after I graduated Parsons, right, I didn't know what to fucking do. You know, I was like, you can't, you can't. And you know what? It was also a different time. Like kids go out of art school uh -huh. now, they can look on Instagram and mm -hmm. see all these artists yeah, making it, and yeah. they think that that's how it is. Yeah, so yeah. Like, back then, it's a little different. Yeah, there's really no yeah, there's blueprint. No, yeah, yeah, I know. And I had to figure everything by myself. I can't ask someone. You know, there's right. no one to ask. And but anyway, after four years in Parsons, I got sick of art. You know, I was like, fuck this. You know, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. You know, okay, I'm gonna search for something else. Which I couldn't do, you yeah. know. And I uh, went. And my last job was messengering in New York for okay. like maybe three years. For, I started from '99, and you know, like I told you, I got run over by a car on Delancey and Allen. You know, the car fucking blew the red eye on me, you know, and the fucking I just flew, and I lost my bike. And well, what else later, did you? What else did you? Lose? I know, right? Just your bike? Yeah. You didn't get hurt? No, it was crazy. I flew like fucking from here to there, you know. And I'm no no scratching no nothing. But you lost your bike, so that was that. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, and that was like Friday, and the next week, you know, a couple of days later was nine one one, and then and if I was if I had my bike, I would have been in that fucking building, man. The Monday Tuesday, yeah, I yeah. always I'm, I'm always like in the ninety sixth floor, on the World Trade Center, so you know, <laughs> another weird story. So that's yeah. All right, so the moral of the story is sometimes getting hit by a car. Yeah, is it's actually, good. Yeah, it's a good. Yeah, thing. it's a good thing, man. Wow. So yeah. okay, New York. 
at that time. Mm. There was like alleged gallery probably ended maybe by that. Oh point. yeah, yeah, yeah. Alleged gallery opened up when I was in Parsons, right? I was I was living right in from the Paul's boutique right. on Rivington. Oh okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alleged gallery was right there. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because you know I was having this conversation with our mutual friend Joey Garfield mm. last night. We were talking mm. about the creation of the Barnstormers. Yeah. And he was kind of saying how like alleged had already been happening, mm-hmm. and like a lot of the guys who weren't showing there were the mm-hmm. ones who became the Barnstormers yeah. and went and did their thing. Yeah. So how, okay, so you're saying you didn't do any art, but all of a sudden, uh. but you're with yeah, people so, who are making art. So how does this work? So I, yes, so you're lying. You did. You were doing <laughs> art in some way. <laughs> No, I was I was doing like some performance thing on 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 the streets, you know, when the chief came Osagi, you know, the, the garbage thing. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. But wait, uh, <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, you haven't seen that photo. I'm, 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 I'll you, show you later. Yeah, we'll definitely post yeah, that. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. With this, yeah, with the, the story. chief Kimosabi, but so what a, were you doing? I was just 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 walking around with the crazy garbage. You know, when I was a kid in, you know, in, in the 80s, right? <laughs> there's so much, there's so much to unpack right now. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even know where to go. I know, me too, but when I was a kid, I, you know, I used to come to New York with my parents, you know, and, uh, when I, in like 1980, 1981, the first thing I saw was those, those, you know, those black kids spinning on the fucking cardboard box right. with the, with the boom box. Right. I was like, I didn't know what the fuck that was, you know? Right. I was like, whoa, that's cool. And the next thing is like, is homeless is people walking around with crazy fashion, you know, with garbage and, yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, mom and dad, I want to become like that. <laughs> <laughs> not the B-boys. Yeah, not the B-boys, but the garbage man, you know, the, the homeless. And I was like, no, please. <laughs> you know, but I, I, but I had to do it. So, you know, that, that's, from, <laughs> that's why I did that. And I named it Chief Kimosabe. And so yeah. you would just walk around. Yeah, with the garbage. It, 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 my costume were just made of garbage, you know. It we, looks like a Native American kind of. So it was thing. performance art. Yeah, yeah. Or just, or just a, a fucking identity crisis. Right. Or yeah. Whatever yeah. that yeah. shit is. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Your, your therapy sessions must be. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. You know. And what was the fucking question? <laughs> No, I mean the question. Oh no! Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, so how? Okay. Did, okay. So um, all these guys, yeah. like Doe's Green and okay. David Ellis. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So um, I met Mike Ming in Japan, and uh, I don't know, I don't know how and where I met him, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, I met him in Japan, in Tokyo, and like eight years later, he just calls me. He's like, "Yo, I'm in the, in the crew called Barnstormers, and uh, we're in like Dumbo area, and painting, you know." I was like, why don't you come over and paint? I was like, Mike, I, I can't paint no more. And I forgot how to paint, and I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not an artist, you know. It says, yo, if you're not doing anything, just come over. I was like, okay. I was like, I don't have my bike. And did know? you know any of these, any of these other guys no. at this point? No, okay. just, just Mike. Just, just Mike. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I went to Dumbo, you know, and and oh my god, and that that day, that I was like, this is what I want to do. You know, it took me like what eight was. You know, since Parsons, you know, I was like, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. What, what, what was it? Uh, what, what was it that made? Because I know those guys are so unique and they yeah. all have such style. Yeah. And so they're so unique. But like, what, uh, the what fir- did it for you? It's just the freedom. It, yeah, the freedom and and, and um, you know, everything that I learned in Parsons, they were not doing. <laughs> right. You know. It was total opposite thing, right? You know, and uh, you know, you know, Dave was doing the time lapse painting with the, you know, yeah, with all right. the crews, and the whole place was just fucking bombed, you know, with the with the painting with spray cans and everything. I was like, whoa, you know, I haven't seen anything like that before, mm-hmm. you know. So and there was camaraderie too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah. like in the art world is kind of mm. it's weird. There is, but there isn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and they were painting with the fucking rollers, you know. The rollers and house paint, you know. Oh, I didn't know you could do that, you yeah. know. And they were up on the ladder, you know. I was like, what is this, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, so it just blew my mind, you know. And 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 I met Dave there. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know, I think, I and he goes like, Masaki, paint something on the floor in the time lapse. And I was like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't do that to me. <laughs> you know, I haven't painted for like, what? Don't put me on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I did it, right? Anyway, I did it, and it was fucking shit, you know, total shit. I was so embarrassed, and I was like, okay. And that that just started me. I was like, okay, I'm gonna become really serious about art again. Okay. You know? Because it is, what I what I just done is like, is is not acceptable. <laughs> and they was like, ah, it's good, it's good, you know. Why don't you just join the bar and something gonna do it? And it just happened. Yeah. <laughs> and then they painted over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they painted over it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mike, you know? who did you invite? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, who, who's this fucking guy? <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, when, what, what, uh, mm. what did that, what did that lead to? Because I know at some point you moved back to Tokyo, but mm. like what, what was those moments still in New York? What, what, what was your art life like? Oh, uh, so I have to start everything from the scratch. I didn't know, I didn't know how to paint anymore. I right. didn't know what to paint. You but you know. also like, there's not, uh, I'm sure there's not like a ton of galleries around where you can like show or yeah. was there? No, yeah, no, okay. no. Yeah. So everything, my, my life just was based in, in barnstormers. And okay. I learned, you know, all that stuff through barnstormers, you know, from those to, you know, just looking at how they do it, you know. And I, I had to relearn, you know, relearn everything. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and the fucking visa runs out, you know. <laughs> you know, 2000 from my shady lawyer says, yo, you got to leave the country in two, two months or you're going to get fucking deported. You're never going to come back again. Where are your parents at this point? Oh, in Japan. Okay. So yeah, they're, they're already back. Yeah. They're okay, already right, back. All right. And, and I, you know, I only had $200 in my pocket and I went back to Tokyo <laughs> and I had to start everything from the fucking scratch again. And no you, one knows me. Yeah. 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 You're kind of a weird yeah. 75% American at this yeah, yeah, point. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You're, but you, you're you Japanese <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, So then you're an outcast again. Yes, exactly. And I, and I was a bicycle messenger, right? And uh, my name started going spreading out because I was riding the, the fixed bike. Okay. And they, they in, never, in Tokyo? Yeah, in Tokyo. Okay. They never seen a fixed bike and they didn't know what it was. And they, they, they thought riding bicycle was... You gotta wear a spandex and a helmet. Right. And like, Which, yeah, you're like trekking. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're like doing but, a, You know, but I wear exactly like this. Just yeah. wear all black with the combat boots, with the, with the messenger bag. And that became like fashionable or, you know, I don't know what that. And, and I became, you know, the Masaki was known as a, as a bike dude. Okay. Yeah. At the same time, the, the junior from Undercover. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know. And I was painting, you know, I was painting. So he says, oh, let's do something. And we did a collaboration thing. With the Which is a big show. deal because yeah. Undercover, June, yeah. June and Undercover is like yeah. such an influential yeah, yeah, brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and that became, oh, oh, I didn't know Masaki was, uh, you know, was an artist, you know. And, and so it was the two, two, two things just colliding. So this is interesting. So mm. you go back to Tokyo. Mm. Your bike messaging, you're kind of bringing a new style. Mm -hmm. The culture. And it's, and it's interesting because, like, in, even though... Tokyo, especially the people like undercover, they're very, yeah. very innovative, and very cool, yeah. have a very style, but there's still like a very like Japanese sensibility. Uh -huh. So when somebody's doing something outside uh -huh. of that, like it seems like it gets attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and I was able to speak Japanese, you know, so I had right. the Japanese thing right. going. So it was, I think it was easier for them to understand. Right. And you uh, know, that time of the blog was the, the thing, you know, so I yeah. was just writing blogs, writing shit, you know. Okay. So I think it just spread it so out. So the Matsaki name start, started becoming, it wasn't just yeah. art, it was just like you yeah. were kind of a culture guy. Yeah, 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 the bike culture guy. Which kind of... That's interesting because even today, mm -hmm. we, well, we'll fast forward a little bit, you mm -hmm. still kind of are melding with like fashion and yeah. stuff now. Yeah, even, yeah. You know, like. Uh -huh. So yeah, I had like a, a lot of different drawers, I guess, you know. <laughs> it's all kind of like by accident. Yeah, and everything is by accident. I mean, yeah. basically, I hate to say it, like, uh -huh. a, car, a car accident in 9-11 uh -huh. really did change your whole entire thing. I know, thing. yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I mean, I guess it is for a lot of people. I yeah. mean, that was yeah. not that profound. Yeah, yeah, but I had a Getting question. hit by a car <laughs> and the 9-11 happened two days later. Yeah. What a profound thing for you. I know, right? But, if, you know, we're talking to you, so yeah. it is. It, is. Yeah. it really was. It yeah, is. my uh, life is nuts, man. Yeah. But, okay, so this, I mean, we're fast-forwarding a little bit mm -hmm. because your career now is in a very interesting place where, like, you're sort of having a good moment it's, things yeah, are good yeah dream come true kind of shit yeah, yeah. dream come true yeah. you're like you met Takashi uh -huh. and he mm -hmm. kind of took, put you under his mm -hmm. wing yeah. I guess you could say yeah yeah the, exactly the American yeah, I'm, like a, I'm like a little bird you know yeah. just came out from the fucking <laughs> egg you know <laughs> but like what what uh what how did he find out about you fucking Instagram <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, because when we did the last feature with you in Juxtapose, which I can't remember what year it was, uh -huh. four uh -huh. or five years ago. Yeah, yeah. You had just the kind of intentionally bad but good. Yeah. Cult <laughs> cultural critiques. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah, an yeah. insult. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the sort of like I don't know where uh -huh. I'm from. Uh -huh. Everything I'm looking at is sort of uh -huh. gonna go through my filter. Yeah, it's yeah. My unique yeah, filter. Yeah, fuck like you those all. paintings are really coming together. Yeah, yeah. So then. After that, is that when 
Yeah, um, when, when was that? I don't remember exactly. Maybe three years ago, I woke up and uh, I see that I see Takashi Bone has followed you. I'm like, what? You know, that can't be real. And I tagged, you know, says, oh, it has a blue chip and a little, yeah, this, this is good. a real dude, you yeah. know. And did you know? Did you know about him? Oh yeah, I I I know. I knew right. him because I I saw him. Funny, when I was living in New York, I saw him walking around. Like in Chinatown area. <laughs> that's why he lived here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, you know, oh, that's uh, that's the, the famous Japanese artist. Yeah, you know? okay. And he wasn't that that famous back then yeah, too, okay. you know. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, so he, so and after he found me, like, maybe a couple weeks later, he came into my Instagram on on, on the mess, not the message, but the real, you know, mm -hmm. the post, and he said, I want to buy this painting, which is a Matisse painting, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? And that's that's what you know. Where, where were you showing at this point? Uh, I had this one small gallery. They, they, they didn't like represent me or anything. It was my friend. So every like every year, you know, I have a you would have a show. Yeah, show yeah, okay. right. yeah, and that's about it. Yeah. You know? And were the were the work selling at that point? Uh, it was yeah when I started the wannabe series. Yeah. And that that that's that it. yeah, yeah. Yep. and it came you yeah, know right. So yeah, yeah. Why did you call it the wannabe series? <laughs> Because I couldn't be them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't be one of them. Simple, you know. Simple, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't be one of those people, you know, artists. And I always wanted to be, but I can't. Right. You know. So fuck it. Let's copy the the famous artist. And just but in your style, like very raw. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the the format. You know, the 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 size will be the same, and the, everything will be the same. But but the face is all you know, smiley marks and. Okay, yeah. art culture is so weird in Japan though. Uh -huh. Like, were people in Japan digging them? Like, did they like it? Yeah, I think so. Because yeah. you know how it's like really like, yeah. It's, contemporary art in Japan is uh. very weird. I, I can't put my finger me on too, it. Me too. Me no, too. Not the art, art, the art, yeah, 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 art the super art, yeah, yeah, art people. They didn't even know me. But right. the, you know the kids, the street kids, right? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. yeah, and the the fashionable people right. were like, hmm, this is interesting mm -hmm. because I think because they've seen those paintings in the, in the, in their you know book every book every yeah, yeah. every book. So I think they were it was you know easier for them to to relate to you know right and has a fucking smiley face on it you know <laughs> but, are, were, are you so were you somebody who did a lot of art history research or no are nah, you are you more just kind of like no nah, I, I the four years in parsons i i love the the art history part okay so you did take yeah you took that part yeah seriously. yeah <laughs> And everyone's fucking laughing. <laughs> you, you, you've been talking about how you're like, I didn't really know. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the history was fun. Right. You know. And I uh, know you take your career seriously. I'm just saying that <laughs> parts in particular. This sounds like I'm digging at you. I'm not digging at you. We know each other. Yeah. I this know. isn't like. I know. All right. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. So the yeah, I, I knew the history. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. Did you just come across? Did you just one day come across, like you know I'm gonna I'm gonna paint I'm gonna try to paint a Matisse <laughs> just 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 as yeah so I I knew about the because about... look Matisse didn't paint it that well either I mean yeah. they're beautiful yeah but like, even Van Gogh was a shitty painter too I you mean know? they're just very yeah yeah they're pretty raw <laughs> yeah. works yeah. you know it's yeah. just that they 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 do speak yeah. to something yeah, yeah right and uh, at the same time you know you learn about the, how the art world works in in Parsons you know there's an art world right you know, there's a auction blah blah blah. And this thing called Christie's and, you know, what, what was the other one? Sotheby's. Yeah, right. So yeah, yeah. Sotheby's, Christie's, okay, and wannabes. Yeah. You know? Right. And, and that's how it came out. And, uh, you know, everything just started to fall in together. Right. Oh, this, this, this could be fun. Right. And at the moment, I was like, I was on the edge, you know, and I had two kids and I, didn't, I, I couldn't even support my family. I was like barely supporting. And if, if this doesn't fucking work, so I'm, I'm going to become a salary man. You know, do you really think going back? Oh yeah, because because I wasn't making it. You know, I was doing little designs to right. you know, and you know the T-shirt. But design. isn't it hard when at a certain age to get into Japanese salary man culture? You can't. You can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can't. But right. that, 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 I was, you know, but I was thinking you know, if I can't, but you know, I know I can't. But was your wife like, you better be a salary man? Or no, no. She's, like, like, she's like, you better make these paintings work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. more. Yeah, she was like, she was cool. You yeah. know, and I know I couldn't be a salary man anyway. You know, but I don't. I don't want to fuck up my life and my family, so I gotta do something. But if this doesn't work, you know, I say I'm gonna fucking quit art because I don't even know what to, what else to do. Right. You know, and but and you had a breakthrough. Yeah, it was another breakthrough. breakthrough. Yeah, another breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. Were you, you know? paying attention to contemporary art at the time? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Which is even nope. better. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even give a fuck about 
I don't know, everything, you know? I yeah, you like, didn't do, like, museum Saturdays nah, or anything? Nah, like no that, galleries, yeah. no museums, no nothing, you know? Yeah, yeah I was just like, in your own world. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, yeah, yeah, nothing. Nothing, nothing serious. By the way, just for the record, I didn't say Matisse is a bad painter. <laughs> Just some of his work is a little bit yeah, more... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's yeah. a fucking... He's a natural genius. Yeah, right. Picasso was like a, you know, calculator, you know? Yeah. But Matisse is like fucking natural. Do you do you like Matisse? Like, I love... I hated Matisse when I was in college, but I love Matisse. You know, Matisse, Cy Twombly, my, my all-time favorite. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Cy Twombly, that's... I mean, like, there's... Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's something about the way he paints. Like I actually would think that you might like that. Yeah, or, yeah. Cy yeah, Tombley is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. And Matisse. Look yeah. at you, fancy guy. Fancy <laughs> guy, right? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I like Cy Tombley. Exactly. What the fuck's wrong with this guy? Yeah, very serious. <laughs> I know, look. right? I like, what? Are, look what you do, man. Uh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but okay. You know? Um. So. Takashi buys that painting. Yeah. And then, and and, and, and then. does he know that you? He doesn't know anything about your backstory. He doesn't know that you were so. Jersey born. No, like, no. yeah, right. No. He doesn't know. Okay. Yeah, and that ends up in the fucking Yokohama, you know. Well, yeah, in the show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And I remember that yeah. show. The show was great, by the way. And the funny thing, he doesn't know, but I wasn't even invited, you know. But I went there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the back. Oh, I'm I'm the I'm the artist that's in the in the show, and they just let me in, <laughs> you know. And uh, and he I I was just talking to him the, like last week, and he was like, and I showed the photo when we took a snap, you know, mm -hmm. together underneath the Matisse painting. So he was, I thought you were really fucked up back then, man. He was like, hey, yeah, you talk, you said that to me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing about yeah, you. Exactly. <laughs> like, do you see your art collection? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you know, I do. I will yeah. admit that that show yeah. in particular. Mm. changed changed my whole way of oh, doing juxtapose yeah because it was the first time i mean we were planning the juxtapose uh -huh. super flat show right around uh -huh. then and that's why i went out to it to see yeah and i was like oh it's like this is the way takashi's collecting yeah and when like, i saw henry make, henry darger in there yeah right you know, i was like dude this guy's whoa you know and then next to like some antiquities yeah. and stuff yeah, you're yeah, like yeah, oh yeah. I, so i can he really did uh -huh. we're gonna big up yeah big up the guy here <laughs> like he like he needs us to do this yeah yeah, yeah. he's not gonna listen to it yeah anyway. but Maybe you will. Yeah. Nah. But um, <laughs> yeah, no. um, but that that show in particular, like, uh -huh. it kind of opened my mind of like, oh, yeah. you can you can curate uh -huh. a Matsaki next uh -huh. to a Darger next to yeah. Antiquities and all yeah. and like a Nara, yeah. you know, yeah. sculpture or yeah. uh, what was it? The like same a wagon, yeah. line, all you know? in the same, yeah. all in the same room. Yeah. And that kind of seems like you kind mm. of embody that mm. with what you're doing mm -hmm. in your painting. So mm -hmm. it just seems like it all makes yeah. sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, man. Yeah. Yeah. And so now it's like you are having big shows. <laughs> I know, right? Everything started as a joke, <laughs> and now because remember that that fucking uh, the Picasso painting that that the yeah, real yeah, Picasso yeah. was was in what the Sotheby's, right? And my fake, you know, fake Arnold Freak was the fake Picasso was in the Sotheby's too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. You know, it's are, like... Are you having fun with this? Of course. Of course, because, you know, I'm just, you know... I know your workload's changed. Yeah. Because four years ago, you know, I was saying to my... And I was saying to my... Telling my friends to go, if, if this Picasso ends up in the Sotheby's, you know, I'll be like... I, I could just walk around naked laughing, you know? And it happened. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa. You know, and... Next thing I it's the other piece comes in to Christie's and it was like wow you know everything that I imagined as a joke just became like serious. But you know what's really awesome uh. about your joke <laughs> is that it's a joke that's working in multiple yeah. cultures. Yeah, like people, it doesn't seem uh -huh. it, it. It seems like it's uh, lots of people are really, like, are really into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is cool because yeah. it's like it it means the joke works. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. It's a good comedian. Yeah, but but you know, my boss Murakami is he's so serious, you know. Right. It's, like, it's, not, it's not a joke, you know? Right. Yeah. But exactly. it's not I mean because it's not a joke. Yeah, it's, it's not good, a joke. But it's like yeah. it's a mm -hmm. again, it's back to your identity yeah. crisis. Yeah, yeah, it's back yeah. to that survival yeah. thing. This is the way that you yep. can tell yeah. your art story. Yeah, yeah. And the only and you're the only <laughs> one to do it. Yeah. Well, it takes a lot of balls, I have to I admit, yeah, to right? write yeah. spiritually fucking bankrupt <laughs> and a huge canvas and behind, and a, behind, a, behind a Murakami sculpture. Yeah, and, and, and with all those legends, yeah, you know? Right, like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, what the fuck, you know? Oh, my God. I don't so, belong there. But 
But I noticed uh, everybody knows who you were at that yeah. opening. They were all like, oh, I love your work. Yeah, like, I, I noticed people coming up to you and saying Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, why? <laughs> And I, you know, I'm flattered, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, uh, actually, we should talk about this. Mm. You have a show opening up in a couple of weeks. That's actually why we're talking. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's There's why. Oh, yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. You have the Paraton yeah. show. And yeah, you've been yeah, showing yeah. the Paraton now yeah. a couple times. Yeah, yeah. And yep. you're getting a kick out of it because yeah. it's like, it's a good gallery. And yeah, it's a good gallery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're showing around the world with them. Yeah, yeah. So what's what's Hong Kong? What's the show? Hong Kong, Hong Kong is a uh, is a the Hong Kong. I did the 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 Hong Kong film series. Yeah, okay. You know, famous. You know, the one that I you know from the nineties or, or and um uh, and I the the main main one is Andy Warhol. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The the wannabes of the the <laughs> Andy Warhol wannabes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah, and uh, and oh, and the cartoons. Okay. Yeah, the cartoons, the Beavers, and the, you know, South Parks. Yeah, you know, <laughs> all the good stuff. But are you? Do you feel now? Because I know, like, uh, maybe it was a year ago when we talked. I think it might have been in L.A. Actually, mm. for Beyond the Streets, mm. like, you were pretty stressed. Like it was like because your workload. Oh my god. Had changed like your whole life, the Dude. way you made art yeah. and like your schedule, oh everything god. you. Because you didn't have that schedule yeah. before. You didn't yeah. need to have it. The, the and now spirit, it was... Yeah, the spiritually fucking bankrupt was last year. I, okay. I, I was liter- literally spiritually fucking bankrupt yeah. <laughs> last year. Right. You know? And like you said, the workload just changed. You know, I'm painting like constantly every mm-hmm. day. You know, everybody thinks, oh, Misaki's like, oh, he went to the art world. You know, he's cool. Now it's like, no. It doesn't man. work that way. No, 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 no. You don't know. You don't know how many hours you have to work, you know? It's like 24 hours every day, seven right. days a week, nonstop, right. you know, and, you know, I, 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 you know, I had a tennis elbow last year, you know, for overpainting. I couldn't paint for two weeks. That, that, that's how, how hardcore it is. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and last year. I so that's, that's like his <laughs> salary man mentality. Yeah. In exactly. Japan. Yeah. And, and messenger mentality. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because right. Messenger is by commission. Right. You gotta, you gotta work gotta hard. Yeah, yeah. You gotta do it. And, and your dispatchers just, uh, fuck, they fucking kill you. You know, they over, overdose you with works, you know. Oh, you gotta go there in five minutes. Yo, I got fucking 20 miles. I had a, Fuck do I go there in five minutes? Oh, you could do it. Right. You know, that's like same with, you know, same here in Kai Kai Kiki. You could do it. You could do it. Right. Like, okay, pain, pain, like, do this by tomorrow. Huh? So you're built for it, but <laughs> yeah. in a different way. Yeah, in a different way. Right. So all that, the past experience was, was is working perfectly, you know, for for me right now, you know? But you get a chance, right? Like, mm. when you're hanging out with, like, Virgil mm. Abloh <laughs> and, like, doing the kind of, like, the uh, stuff that you get to do. Uh-huh. You do get to have, like, this is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get to meet all these, you know, cool yeah. people, you know? Right. Like, yeah, you know? So there are some, like, kind of moments oh, yeah. where you get to go, like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the, the best thing is you could you could just, you know, talk to, to, to Kashi every day, you know, and ask about art. And he tells, you know, he teaches me about art. Yeah. And that you can't really do, you right. know? He just teaches me every day. He just can't knock the jersey out of yeah. the <laughs> You know? Yeah, so, yeah. So last year was, I know, I know Takashi was testing me last year. Mm-hmm. I, 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 he didn't, he didn't tell me, but I, I just, I just felt it, you know. And I know he's, he's pushing me beyond the fucking limits. And I, I guess he wanted to see how I, how I do. If I fail, I fail. If mm-hmm. I don't, I don't. But, mm-hmm. but I came out alive. Right. And last year was was just pure fucking insanity. And I was like, oh my god, I don't know, I don't know, I'm gonna fucking be, a, you know, survive this thing. But uh, but, you know, but last year was so crazy. So this year is like, hmm, you yeah. Know. Yeah, whatever. Well, you kind you kind of you kind of set yeah. you set yourself yeah, up. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The mindset is already right. here, so. Yeah. Uh, I, we can edit this out if it's not. Yeah. Are your parents still alive? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they do they like what you're doing? Dude, man, finally, finally, you know, finally, I met him. I met my 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 parents on the cherry blossom, so like it was March or April. Yeah, okay. So I I invite him, you know, my parents. Let's go to dinner. No, okay. no, let's go to, for lunch. Okay. You know, and we sat, you know, and my dad's a Musaki. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> You said don't go to fucking art school. Art school is shit. Your life gonna become a fucking blah blah blah. It's like Masaki, I'm so proud of you. You know, you're with Mr. Murakami, blah blah blah. And my mom, my mom was telling me, why don't you become a salaryman? Even from even last year, <laughs> it was like, mom, <laughs> what the fuck you talking about? But now they were like so proud of me. You know, oh, I'm like, 
I'm like, oh, I did, I did something right. good, you know. All that, the, the money that he and they paid see that you're Carson's working hard. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, they know, they know. Yeah, they know because they know that, the, you know, that name Murakami Takashi is so famous in Japan. Yeah, even my parents know. Right. Okay. You know, so when I told them, oh, I'm with Kai Kai Kiki now, it's like, woo. Right. You know? Okay. Yeah. So, but you know, now, now they're so super. So, I've asked this to Takashi a couple times, mm. and. Now that you're the second <laughs> Japanese artist I'm interviewing, so that this will make sense. Yeah. Takashi always says that like the Japanese art critics uh, give him a hard time. Uh, 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 uh. So like, do you, do do you find yourself like with with the Japanese art critics? They're like, what what are you doing? Or or is it different because they they still consider you a slight outsider? I don't think the art. I don't think I exist in in in, in front of their eyes. I, I never had a critique. even though you you are in like China or you are in the U S. Like yeah. people are paying attention. I, I never had any critiques from J- Japanese media or anything. You know, I'm like I'm like I'm like, you know, like a ghost in Japan. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, okay. even even Murakami is like he's so well known, but in Japan, everyone everyone's like, you know, right? Yeah, and it, yeah, I was like, what the fuck. Yeah, but I don't. I don't exist in Japan. <laughs> Probably better use work. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So what? Matsaki ten years from now. <laughs> let's do, let's do this. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's your what's your what's your, what's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> from ten years from now, right? Yeah. What what is what is Matsaki? In ten years from now. Oh my god. Man. I, You'll be sending your kids to art school. So. Oh my god! I, I would, I would, I would make them stop. So, <laughs> I would make, yo, think, think at least five times. Yeah. You know. <laughs> wow, man, I, I, I have no idea, man. When we, like five years ago, I, you know, I was like, you know, like, oh, I want to, you know, I want the, the Christie's Sotheby's auction, and it happened already. Within the three year span, and then you don't get. And the thing is, you don't get to stop and be like, "Well, I'm done." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, no and I gotta keep on going. So I gotta, I gotta survive for the next ten years, right? So it's it's more of a, like a kind of kind of burden for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, I gotta do to keep on doing this, you know? I gotta survive now. You know, it's it's not easy, but but if you come up here, you gotta be, you know. I'm always top of the game to be surviving, you know. Right. The guy should be surviving for 25 years or something like that, right? Yeah. And yeah. That, that's that's kind of rare. And he, and he has never taken a break. Yeah. And he's Japanese, you yeah. know. And it's like, how the fuck do you do that, you know? And I'm not gonna become that famous, but I, I want to survive, you know. Right. So, you tell me in 10 years what do I? <laughs> I think you know me better. <laughs> I think a you know my you a, know all my history. I think I think a quiet <laughs> surf town surf in town. south southern Japan south of Tokyo. Tokyo. That's where the surf towns are. Right? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Just right? flip flops. Yeah. Like your uncle in Hawaii. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's my that's my goal. But, but painting. Yeah, but painting. Yeah, yeah. but I'll, I'll never paint in Hawaii, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hawaii's not a place to fucking paint. No. Yeah. I'm not retiring, but yeah, so, so, yeah, uh, yeah. I dream about retiring somewhere in the <laughs> tropical islands. <laughs> yeah, just south of Tokyo. Yeah, south of Tokyo. Or, or, or yes, yeah. Just pick up surfing. Yeah, surfing, right? Yeah. Have yeah. you picked up surfing yet? Yeah, yeah. I did one once, but it was too expensive. Yeah, know? yeah. And uh, I, I said, I, I kind of feel me. like that somebody who's starting to do well in life uh, pick up surfing. Sorry, <laughs> girl. Oh my god. Oh no, don't say, don't say that. <laughs> No, just go talk to Barry. He surfs oh, yeah, all the yeah. time, oh, like yeah, every that's day. True. I'm sure he probably surfed yeah. like the whole time he was right? there. Yeah, yeah the weather was going. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it, we've we've got we did plenty, but <laughs> no, we have. This, oh, is, this yeah? is a really good. Yeah, this is oh, good. Do you want to keep talking? No, whatever, man. I love talking to you. I could talk for like fucking days with you, man. Um, because <laughs> we are here in New York, and yeah. it's like, can you talk about your trip to Jersey the other day? Oh! <laughs> So, dear listener, uh, oh my god, that's a fucking tragedy, man. Matsaki got racially profiled. Oh oh, yes, 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 yes. In his old neighborhood. Oh my god, man. Oh fuck. So you know the Richfield Park, right? Oh my god. Oh my god. You know, so so I went back there and rented a car in the fucking most rainiest fucking day. To get to get a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get get back to yeah to to get that fucking vibe again, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I got it back. I went there and I got it back and I was like I ain't co- I'm never gonna fucking come back here ever again, you know. So I went there and I was taking photo of my old house, you know, 
and all of a sudden the cop car pulls up on me. I'm right in front of my my rented car, so I won't fucking leave. But I was out the car, and I got surrounded by like what four four cops, you know. And then they like asking me questions. Like, what are you doing here? Because I'm taking the photo of my old house and the school. Hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they just fucking, you know, integrated me for like 30 minutes, asking the same questions over and over and over and over and again, you know? And I'm, At what point did you say I'm a famous artist? I did, right? So I showed my Instagram, you know, and it's like, but they don't, they don't even know what Instagram is. <laughs> they don't even know what blue chip is, you know? They don't even know what art is anyway. So it's like, it, 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 didn't, it didn't do any good. Crap. <laughs> it didn't work. So no but, more Jersey for you. No more. No but more. Are you gonna make Bruce Springsteen paint? <laughs> and Bon like, Jovi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, the Bon Jovi paintings. Yeah, that I would can be, imagine yeah. that would be. Yeah. <laughs> housewives everywhere. Yeah, just, yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh my God, Jersey. Oh my God, dude. No, no. So you're you're um, no. you're a Tokyo guy, and that's where you're gonna be. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, for the time being. The thing is, I live in Tokyo for now what, more than ten years. What's fifteen now? It's nineteen. What twenty? No, yeah, yeah. It's twenty nineteen. Yeah. It's, 20, <laughs> it's, weird, it's weird how time works. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I, I'm still a tourist there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a tourist here too. You know, the same same thing until rest of my fucking life. You know. You're like the forever tourist. Yeah, I'm the forever tourist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you found a language for it, so it's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Forever tourist. Yeah, writing shit. Yeah. <laughs> Spiritually fucking yeah, bankrupt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Not today. Yeah, not today. So there you go. That was the colorful world of the Japanese American artist Mad Saki. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you like the channel, subscribe to the channel, tell all your friends about Radio Juxtapose and how much it's going to change their life. And if you still got time to kill, then why not look back through the archive, check out the Icy and Salt episode that we recorded in New York a couple of months ago. And if you got more time, make sure you throw it right back to episode one, where we sat down in conversation with Lucy Sparrow in Miami last year. Till next time, peace.